position and reference frames. Position and reference frames. Speed, distance, and time didn't require us to define where we started or where we ended up. They were just absolute changes. Uh, they just measured how far we traveled and how long it took to get there. However, in physics, uh, knowing where something is and how its position changes with time uh, is important. To, to find this, we use position where you're located and a reference frame where, where you're located in regards to something else in space. Very important. Uh, position and reference frames. A reference frame is something that allows us to where an object is defined in relation to each other. For, for instance, when we use a map, we compare different cities compared to where we are in, uh, on the map. And, however, we don't need this for every problem. It's particularly useful in some problems where we have to pay attention to a direction. Uh, one activity you could do with students is to send uh, a kid out of space. We're going to have a, a little bit of a hide-and-go-seek, if you will, uh, and you can hide something in the classroom. And then once it's hid in the classroom, you can direct, uh, direct a classmate who went out in the hallway to find this object, and chances are the kids will, they won't use hot and cold, you're getting hot and you're getting cold to find this object. They're going to give them some kind of path to follow. They're going to tell them to take so many steps to the right, so many steps to the left. And it's interesting, often they'll come up with a coordinate system that takes advantage of, let's say, the desks in the room. You might go three desks to the right and then uh, three desks to the back of the classroom. Or you may use tiles on the floor if you have tiles to find something. So we use a coordinate system to keep track of where we're going and where we've been. Uh, usually with a reference frame, we have a starting point and an ending point and then some standardized unit of measure. Uh, again, the standardized, standardized unit of measure in physics for direction is the meter, so we'll refer to that constantly. And of course, we have some location where we start. In, in physics, we'll call that the origin. And then we have three different directions we could move. One is the x-axis, so if we look at this slide, X, the X plane falls in the plane where I'm moving the cursor, left and right, and left and right. The Y axis would be up and down, up and down. And then the Z axis, which is hard to draw, would be out of the board, out of the page, out of the screen, the monitor, or into the monitor. Kind of hard to do in two dimensions, but I think you get the idea. For the most part, we'll stick with the x and the y axis, and we'll deal with the z axis later on in, in the course of study. And we use a number line when we're keeping track of which way objects are going. And this number line is simply a coordinate system. And if I move to the right on the number line, usually we'll say uh, this, the, the motion is positive. If I move to the left, the quantity is negative, the change in quantity is negative, and where we're standing on the number line is our position. Sometimes our position can be described using the letter X, as you see on the bottom here. Uh, if we're halfway between these two points, positive and negative, this might be, well, I don't know, zero. So I'll draw a zero here. So that would be the zero meter mark. And if I went in the positive direction, I'd have a positive motion, negative, and what's the left would be negative. One uh, activity that you could do with your classes is to give them. Uh, a, uh, a little game of hide-and-go-seek. You could hide something in your classroom. Uh, it could be anything, some candy, anything the students like. And uh, while students are hiding something, send a student out into the hallway and then bring that student back and have, have the kids give them a set of instructions on how they're going to find this object, an object that's been hidden. Uh, so you can test out your directions on a classmate uh, by giving them a series of steps that they have to follow to find this this uh, prize, if you will. Uh, and 
usually when they do this, they're going to need a set of directions in order to make it happen. Some of the directions that they'll need in order to perform this task, they usually come, have some starting point. Let's say they come back into the classroom, that's where they start. A starting point is typically referred to as an origin. Uh, then they're going to have a set of directions, uh, left, right, forward, back, up, down, and some unit of measure. So when a kid comes in, you commonly will find another student describing how to get to this object as being hidden by them saying, okay, you're going to go over two desks, and then you're going to go back two desks, and over and back might be the set of directions, and the unit of measure are desks. Uh, another thing, if you have tiles on your floor, you could go over two tiles and then back ten tiles and so on. So tiles are other things that are happen regularly in the classroom, and they can use them as a unit of measure. So reference frames have a starting point, a set of directions, up, down, left, right, positive, negative, if you, if you prefer, and then some kind of standardized unit that you would use. Remember in physics we use meters for standardized units. In this course, we usually use uh, we usually use the origin as being zero. Some starting point is always the zero meter mark, if you will. Um, it's where you start. Or if we use the next axis, the origin would again be zero. Uh, and then we use coordinate systems that are perpendicular to each other, x, y, and z Cartesian coordinates. Let's just use the cursor to define these. X is the horizontal axis. It falls in this plane along the horizon the horizontal. Uh, Y-axis it falls along the vertical, up and down. And then it's difficult to see the third dimension, but the Z-axis would be out of the board and then into the board. So we use the X, Y, and Z-axis. And again, the, the meter is the standard unit of measure. Uh, the axis that we're going to use in one dimension is usually the X-axis. You could also use the Y-axis or the Z-axis, but um, usually we walk along the ground, so we use the x-axis. When things fly through the air vertically, we'll use the y-axis. Um, and typical convention, when you move to the right on the x-axis, you move in the positive direction. When you move to the left, you move in the negative direction. And where you're located in space is called your position. So if I, I don't know, if I put my cursor there, I might be in, at a negative position. If I come all the way over here to the right, I might be at a positive position, and then somewhere in the middle will be a position where I'm neither negative or positive. I'm at the origin. That might be zero.